Hello again, I am Blunty. Seems every time I review a gadget with a screen on it, portable game consoles and smartphones and the like, I always get a fistful of folk asking for advice on how to record a screen properly, because they say when they try it, it looks like this, all washed out, or this kind of wibbly garbage, or my personal pet peeve, the little island of light in an inky ocean of nothing with mysterious dark matter blobs passing by. Ew, bad video, looks ugly, is distracting, no. But getting it right is actually very easy. Just four simple steps to a clean, clear screen scene for your videos. Step one, get a tripod. This is not optional. This is not a mere suggestion. I am God all blunty and this is my first commandment. Thou shall use a tripod. There is nothing that screams amateur knob gobbler noob faster than someone trying to demonstrate a gadget with one hand while the other is trying to hold the camera and keep it pointed in the right direction and keep it focused. And the very fastest way to create out of focus jittery, blurry, unwatchably, eye rapey footage that no one with even moderate eyeball function will want to watch. <gasps> When I'm doing tabletop demos and reviews, I actually use a Manfrotto monopod, a 561B HDV to be specific. It's got these little feet so it can stand steady all on its own, unlike most other monopods. So when I sit behind the camera, my legs can easily sit either side and my arms don't have to stretch around a more space greedy tripod. Failing the presence of a handy dandy tripod or a freestanding monopod, another option, which is also the most inexpensive option by the way, is a small tabletop tripod or better yet, a gorilla pod, which can sit directly on your desk. I love gorilla pods and I have a small collection of them in the various sizes and models. Just make sure to get one big enough to properly support your camera and you're good to go. You will be a bit more limited in your angles and general camera positioning in this way, but at least it's cheap. Step two is lighting. Every camera, no matter how good, bad, cheap, expensive, fancy or simple, will do better when the subject is properly lit. Once more, this is not optional, not a mere suggestion, this is commandment number two. Thou shalt use plenty of proper illumination. When filming screens, reflections from your lights are usually an issue, so I usually use two lights, one off to either side. This will flood the tabletop with a nice even light and help keep reflections at bay. You can place one light slightly further away to maintain a nice soft natural shadow if you like. I usually use a couple of inexpensive LED panel lights or my trusty roto lights, but I've also used basic desk lamps as well. The type of light isn't as important as simply getting a good, bright, even coverage. Step 3. Set up your camera. Ideally, put it in a fully manual mode. If you can't go full manual on your camera, shutter priority mode is the next best bet for this particular situation. I'll explain exactly why in a moment, but it's usually marked on your mode dial or menu with an S for shutter or TV. Why TV? Well, it stands for time value and is a hangover name from camera days of yore. Don't worry about it, just use it. Any kind of automatic mode is the devil for this kind of work. The dark lord of lies and frustration sent from the stinky bowels of bad YouTube videos to ruin your day. Because if you're in auto and your hand moves in front of the screen, for example, or the content displayed goes from very bright to very dark, your camera will probably start trying to compensate and all you'll get is a flickery, ugly video as it dips back and forth, bright and dark. So check them off. Shutter speed locked down. Lens aperture locked down. And your ISO sensitivity locked down. If you're unfamiliar with how to get your camera to do this stuff, pick up your user manual and start reading. You'll only ever get the best out of a tool if you know how to use that tool properly. This includes cameras. This also goes for focus. Lock it down in manual mode if you can. If you leave it on autofocus, prepare for misery and cruddy looking video. As again, if your hand moves in front of the screen as you're demonstrating the game or app or whatever, this may trigger the camera to start trying to refocus. You don't want that. The subject is the screen, not the back of your hand. And the camera hunting back and forth for a new focus lock halfway through your video is just going to look awful. Now, with the screen of your subject device still turned off, adjust your camera settings to proper exposure of the general scene. 
Step four, turn on the device's screen now. One or two things will now hit you in the eyeball. Either things will look okay, in which case, yay, or the screen will probably be overexposed. This is where I see most people start screwing up. To fix this problem with the screen being too bright, or indeed too dim for the camera, they start fiddling with the camera to try and get the screen to look right. This is certainly 100% absolutely the wrong approach. This is how you end up with those stupid looking ghost screen in the dark type videos that remove all sense of context and scale. Useful things the human brain likes to have. Or worse still, they don't do anything, so the screen is blooming from being overexposed, which obliterates any detail of whatever you're trying to show, making the whole exercise completely pointless and deeply frustrating for your audience. So, leave the camera alone. The simple trick to getting this right is now to adjust the brightness setting of the screen itself in order to match the rest of the properly exposed scene. Some devices will give you finer control than others in this respect so you may still have to fiddle with the position of your lighting or your camera ever so slightly to help balance things out again. In some cases, you may run into a device whose screen refresh rate causes it to look flickery on camera or have other weird rolling bar artifacts. And this is why manual control over the shutter speed is important because this is caused by the camera and the screen refreshing their view of the world at different frequencies. If you run into this issue, it can usually be resolved or at least minimized by either raising or lowering your camera's shutter speed to compensate. So that's all set, check your focus one more time to make absolutely sure the display itself is in sharp focus and you're pretty much good to go. Now you'll have a good clear shot of your device, its screen exposure is well balanced so you get a nice clear image of the screen in the full context of the device and any off screen buttons and your own actions so viewers have a complete and informative view of exactly what's going on. A couple of other side tips for this kind of stuff, use a nice solid heavy non-slip stand or cradle to hold the device steady so it doesn't slide around which can be distracting and potentially move it out of focus. I also often use a small blob or two of blue tack to keep things in place if I've got them sitting directly on the desk. This can also help tilt them toward the camera a little for a more perpendicular view of the screen. Holding the device in your hand while you demonstrate is sometimes necessary depending on what you're showing and what the device is, but avoid it as often as you can as it's easy to kind of drift out of the focus spot or even off screen if you're not very careful. And I know lots of you out there use your iPhone to film this kind of stuff, but Apple's default camera app just doesn't give you enough control to do this properly. So try something like the Filmic Pro app, which lets you set and lock your focus and exposure points separately, as well as giving you a few more frame rate options and a higher video bitrate setting to help squeeze out a bit more image quality. So there you have it, I hope this was helpful, and if you see anyone else out there on YouTube demoing their games and apps as if you are looking into the sun itself or lost in space style, make sure you send them a link to this video for their sake and yours. But you know, try and be kind about it, say, hey, this video can help your videos look better. Don't just wander along and say, your videos look like shit, fix it by doing this. Well, I suppose you could do that. No sweat off my sack. <laughs> Sometimes tough love is best. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I am Blunty, and I'll catch you next time.